So welcome everybody, this is the Open Ed SIG um, welcoming you to the OER 20 preview and we're so excited to have all of you, uh, so many people here who are involved in the planning and the execution of OER 20 and who are going to share with us some of the exciting things that are going to be happening and they're happening despite all the uh, scares about possible pandemics and everything else. We know we're going ahead and April the 1st and 2nd will be OER 20 in London. So we're really looking forward to everybody enjoying that event. But of course, if you can't make it there physically, it doesn't matter because there's lots of opportunities to participate virtually, asynchronously and synchronously. And exactly, Deb, we're going to keep calm and we will carry on. So it's the... Um, Let's just give you a quick tour of the uh, space and tell you a little bit about the Open Ed SIG. So the Open Ed, Ed SIG is supported by Alt. Uh, we have a community space. We're a totally open group. You don't have to be an Alt member in order to participate. Um, but our aims really are to support open uh, education policy. Well, that's an interesting slide. I didn't notice that the N had fallen off. There you go. Anyway, so we support, we develop, we influence, we sustain. We hope to draw together some of the many disparate voices of open education and to amplify. And that is our aim. Uh, we're a pretty uh, open group of people as well. So we always welcome new members. So big welcome to you for joining the uh, webinar. Just a quick note about where to find the settings and things within uh, Collaborate. If you come down to the bottom corner at the right hand side, the little pink button there, if you open that, a panel will open. You'll be able to see the list of participants and presenters. You can join in the chat. So please don't feel um, that you're unable to participate. Please participate and we'll keep an eye on the chat uh, and join you. And um, also, if you need to check your audio, if you want to use your mic at some point, the little settings wheel in that panel is what will help you do just that. Uh, so the OER 20 preview, here's the conference, here are the details. Um, and without more ado, I'm going to go over to uh, the, the team. So we have um, Daniel with us, we have Jim, we have Mia, we have Anne-Marie. Um, we have Francis, all ready with things to tell us about the um, OER 20 event. So we're going to start off with just a brief introduction from each of those people. So if I call your name, participants, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself to start us off? And um, Mia, could we start with you? Sure you thing. Thank you. Teresa. Thank you. That's a pleasure. <laughs> Yes, it certainly is. Um, so good morning from New Jersey on the other side of the pond, as they say. Um, uh, introduction. Uh, well, my name is Mia Zamora. I'm a, a literature and writing professor at Kane University in New Jersey and um, an enthusiastic colleague of both uh, Jonathan Shaw and Daniel Villar Onrubio, who are my co-chairs for the um, uh, conference. And we've been working hard all year um, to pull together uh, a wonderful experience for everyone. It's been my great pleasure to be a part of um, the open ed community for some time as a practitioner. Um, and uh, well, we'll talk more about the themes of the conference in a little bit, but that's a little bit about me. Brilliant. Thank you, Mia. That's a great start. Um, we're going to come across to Jonathan, seeing as you've mentioned him there as well. So Jonathan, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, hi there. Uh, thanks, Teresa. Um, yeah, so I'm Jonathan Shaw. I'm the I have the the pleasure, I, I guess, of directing a unit called the Disruptive Media Learning Lab at Coventry University. I worked directly with Daniel, and we had the the great pleasure of of hosting me, I think, at some point last year. Um, and this opportunity of coming together to co-chair the conference was um, the perfect excuse to work once more together. So I think, yeah, um, my background is is from photography, and we. I used to drill holes and uh, do funny things for cameras. So it's why would you not do the same sort of thing for education? So um, that's me. Drilling holes and funny things for, for with cameras. That sounds interesting. Thank you for that. So we can kind of pass on to Daniel then, your partner in crime. 
Hello, thanks, Teresa. Uh, yes, so I work here in the DMLL, as we call it. Um, we have a, a line of, of work around open knowledge and digital literacy, digital fluencies. So the opportunity to work around the OER uh, conference was uh, very much connected with things that we are already doing uh, as part of our daily jobs. Uh, and I'm personally a fan of the OER conference. I have been only attending most of them. Uh, it's a shame I couldn't attend last year, but um, it, it was a great inspiration for the topic that we picked for this year. So going through all the documentation generated uh, last year was very inspirational. Um, hopefully we are kind of uh, revisiting some of the questions that already were launched uh, then. That's great. Yes, we, I, I guess we all have that experience that we can't always make every single conference but there's always so much online and uh, so much going on as well and I, I see we've got some more people joining us so welcome um to he, people who he just did, joined us Teresa he did have a good yeah. excuse he was about to come a dad so I think we can all forgive him oh that. no, no <laughs> we can certainly more than forgive him for that and uh, yes I, I haven't uh, I haven't yet seen the baby pictures so I'm not sure Daniel whether I'm going to forbid forgive you for that bit but <laughs> there, are, there are so many that they, they are not in the open web, but I can ah. see the link. <laughs> Maybe that's fair for the sake of the baby. <laughs> so welcome, um, Autumn, you've just joined us as well. Good to see you here. So we're going on with our just brief introductions and we're going to pass to Martin and then Amory and then Jim. Okay. Thanks, Teresa. So uh, Martin Hoxie, I work for Hope. Um, uh, official title is Chief Innovation Community and Technology Officer, and um, I, I suppose I'm like a duck in the background, paddling like mad uh, to try and keep things <laughs> moving and uh, engaging the community with the, the conference. You are the magic, Martin, that makes it all happen. Yes, not a duck so much as a swan gliding gracefully through. So that's brilliant. Um, so, who is next on our list? It's got to be Anne-Marie. Morning, um, I'm Anne-Marie Scott. Um, some of you may remember me from the University of Edinburgh, where I spent a very long uh, part of my career. Um, I am now the Deputy Provost of Athabasca University in Canada, um, which is Canada's kind of equivalent of the Open University in the UK, um, founded about a year later. Um, and I'm running one of the satellite sessions at OER20 um, and very, very many thanks to Daniel and Jonathan for providing us with a space at the DMLL. I'm running a session um, that was conceived by myself, Marin Deepwell, Laura Chernovit and Ian Dolphin and I'm, I'm running the session in my capacity as the chair of the board of the um, Perio Open Source Foundation. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about what the session is in a while. Brilliant, thank you. We've got a room full of movers and shakers, everybody. So this is a great uh, this is a great opportunity to uh, get to know more about what they're up to. Jim, talking of movers and shakers. <laughs> hey, how are you? Thanks, Teresa. Um, this is Jim Groom. I'm coming from Northern Italy, which is Europe's foremost purveyor of COVID-19. I'll have you know. And um, I'm actually very happy to be here. I'm part of the Reclaim hosting team. And uh, we have been avid supporters of OER, OER conference, I guess, 19, 20, 18, uh, since I uh, talked in 16 and met a lot of great folks. So I'm thrilled to be here and I'll pass it back to you. Thank you. Thanks so much. So we're going to talk about this conference. Let's find out more about what's going to happen and what's going on. So. And I had a brief think about this before we started, because the theme is very much the care in openness. And in my UK context here, the word care is an abused and under undermined word. Yeah. And let me explain what I mean by that. People who work in care, as in people who care for others, are often underpaid. The work they do is vital, uh, supporting the dignity and the lives of disabled or elderly people. So care to me is a hugely loaded term. When we think about care, I think we really need to uh, 
explore this. What do we mean by care? So let's hear a bit more about the theme of the conference and some of the uh, topics that are going to be treated uh, at OER 20. I can jump in uh, and start some some comments there. First of all, Teresa, I think that was very articulate, and um, I'm so glad that you are coming at it from that um, nuance. Um, and I think uh, Jonathan, Daniel, and I, when we were thinking at first about care, wanted wanted to harness all of those associations with the word in order to look at the word with more depth and criticality in the context of open education and higher education. So, you know, when we think about care, obviously, you know, we're thinking about uh, reaching or moving towards well-being. And I think we're also thinking about the impact that we all have on our world that might make us live as best as possible. Um, and that's a huge challenge in this day and age, as we all know. Um, so, when it comes down to the kinds of things we want to bring to this word care and thinking about it rigorously through community and community conversation, I think one of the first things we're concerned with is the idea of whether this is possible and how to proliferate this possibility in a world in which um, we're being surveilled. So we're thinking about data surveillance and risk on the open web and how we might be able to map out or give visibility to um, any of the critical components of care practice. Um, I think we're also interested in building sustainable communities and we're interested in participatory culture and civic engagement. Um, so we're thinking about this notion of a, a healthier democracy and how we do that with the work we do and if it's even possible. So I think that's a lot of words. I'm gonna be quiet now and, and pass, the, pass the baton to my esteemed colleagues. That was a lot of wonderful words. Thank you very much, Mia. Yeah, Mia, actually, I remember that when we were trying to come up with the actual uh, title for the conference, we were hesitating to go with the caring in the gerund form or whether we should go for the infinitive to add more kind of a seriousness to it. But we were definitely acknowledging that the, um, we wanted to connect uh, the idea of care to the literature and also the fact that uh, there are very different traditions uh contributing to discussions around care and what it means to care in in contemporary society more broadly but also specifically in education um and what i would like also is to recommend uh what well, i'm sure that everyone here who is already part of the community has been following the the great blog posts uh, the guest uh, blog posts which are in the under the news tab of the conference website because they they draw on uh, very interesting references. Um, we have uh, a number of contributors uh, connecting this with uh, different uh, traditions, like Helen Crump, uh, she wrote one of the first uh, blog posts and she was uh, linking this with uh, with um, the work of uh, uh, Negri and Hart, for example, with uh, affective labor. Uh, we have, um, we have uh, of course, the work around the FEMP at um, uh, quilt that uh, Francis will be describing later on, but there are different uh, approaches, both from a theoretical but also practical perspective that I think that are adding nuances to, to this uh, whole notion of care. Yes, I love the fact that this is bringing together the, both the digital practice that, that surrounds and, and probably envelops to a certain extent the work in open education, but also the physical practice of crafting and how the uh, quilt is, is um, a metaphor for what we're doing as well. So I'm sure we'll unpack more of that. It's great, great to uh, have this opportunity and to hear more about uh, what you've been thinking let's just pop the link to the sorry i put the wrong link in the chat just now so i'm going to put the oer conference link into the chat right now so that you've got that sorry daniel carry on you want to say something yeah if, if i mean i think one of the things that um i think having the fact that both media daniel and i you bring such differing perspectives together. I think through this process, it's been really interesting and sort of fascinating having that 
having both that dialogue, trying to understand it from from different perspectives. Because for me, in, in particular, in, and in particular, the role that I have at the university is understanding um, what that impact may be for the wider uh, sort of community of educators, i.e. those who perhaps are less familiar with open education, less familiar for where value may sit uh, as part of that. Um, and having and one of the things that came out much later through that process, I think, was what we sort of grappled into the criticality and care in open education, both as a means to sort of explore this, but also to sort of try and get into the messy, the dirty things, because often what we often can describe can be, I think, something which is um, sits on the on the verge of our practice rather than being a core kind of value. And, and I think what we were trying to work with both the featured speakers that we've sort of selected is people who are really trying to bring that into the core and perhaps offer us a different starting point for how we consider both the work that we undertake and how we interact with our with our student communities. Well, that was a perfect segue, Jonathan, into telling us a little bit about your keynote speakers. Tell us more. Mia, do you want to kick off with, our, with, the, with the first that we announced? Sure thing. Um, so uh, the first, um, so the first thing I want to say about those keynote um, uh, conversations is that from the beginning, the three of us um, have been really thinking about this notion of the keynote, and we wanted to sort of um, press up against the, the the traditional format of a talking head. Um, develop like kind of uh, just given content and then uh, we're left as a community to think about that you know we wanted it to be a little bit more interactive so um, in essence uh, we've uh, we're thinking about these keynotes as kind of slots for provocation and interactivity and I'm very happy and pleased to say that the the first uh, speaker who will take up that work for us is Sava Saheli Singh. Um, she currently is a postdoctoral fellow at the, um, in the Department of Criminology at the University of Ottawa in Canada. Um, but she's doing her postdoctoral research um, with the Big Data Surveillance Partnership Project. And um, one of the things that I think is hallmark about her work is that she's recently um, completed some very um, thought-provoking shorts, film shorts, um, that get us really thinking about this nexus, this nexus point of care in uh, the context of data surveillance. Um, and she, I think uh, when, when she opens up the confer conference for us, we're going to have all kinds of um, you know, energy and questions and conversations at the, at the at the tips of our tongues um, after after she sort of opens it up for us. So I'm really thrilled to have her um, coming to London. Brilliant and very much a hot topic. So and and always great to have participation. So that's that sounds exciting. So Sava is one of your first keynotes. Who would like to tell us about the rest of the keynotes? Uh, so I can talk about the, I will say it in Spanish, because they are a Spanish collective, and it's almost 98. Um, they are they are a collective uh, based in the south of Spain, uh, in Seville. Um, they have been doing really interesting work over the last few years. Uh, I mean, I, I have met them, uh, I have known them for a number of years, uh, since the days when I was an undergrad. Um, they are working right at the intersection between uh, culture and technology and activism. Um, and they have developed a number of areas of um, work, one of them being um, Pedagogies of Care, which is one of their most recent and active projects at the moment. Uh, so they will be focusing on that. Also by inviting a number of people to present and take this uh, kind of future keynote space, we wanted uh, to rethink the, the keynote uh, format, as uh, me explained before. So in that slot, we will have um, uh, more than one person talking and, and uh, presenting things that they have been doing, but also suggesting some practical um, uh, things. Uh, also, they have, the, they have been touching uh, some of the topics that we have um, covered in a 
in an indirect way in relation to Curve. So they used to run an annual festival, which each year was devoted to a different topic. And one of them was devoted to, to surveillance uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, and they also run another one looking at the expanded education. So they will be drawing on those references as well. And I think Brian is not with us today, Brian Lamp, but uh, he was there as well. So uh, there was an interesting connection, so even though they are not strictly speaking working in the OER um, arena as such, they have some connections and all their work has been released and their open licenses since 2005, I think. So it will be really interesting to hear from them about their, their more uh, kind of recent developments and projects. Excelente. So that's Themos 98, yes? Muy bien. Like <laughs> I, yes. It's brilliant to have that international yeah. input. Excelente. Wow. That's, that uh, puts my uh, inability of, with the English. No, no language shaming or... here. No language shaming. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I suddenly felt I was back in GCSE Spanish and kind of oh uh, dear, the <laughs> I Pan did not panicking need to for that somebody effect. to point at my. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. You know, I, I, I joke with it da with Daniel uh, regularly. Um, yeah, we, we, we're delighted to also announce uh, Joe Deville, who's senior lecturer at Lancaster University, and uh, Yannicka Adame, um, who's an assistant professor here at Coventry University in the Centre for Post Digital Cultures. Um, in this slot, really, what we were sort of keen to sort of understand is, I guess, touching upon um, both a pragmatic but perhaps more radical uh, venture in terms of what open access publishing can be, and, and specifically, I guess, within a, a scholarly led type of approach. Um, I had the, the, um, the joy of working with Yannicka to um, co edit uh, a guest edition of the Disruptive. Uh, journal of media practice and through that that process of engaging openly in various peer review using hypothesis there was a lot of really interesting challenges and it felt appropriate to bring some of those that that conversations and finding to light here i think for the for oer um and again to that that challenge that each of these are i guess provocations or perspectives that are brought to the table we thought using this slot to sort of really tease that out with with i, I guess the the multiple perspectives between joe and yannicka could be both interesting and challenging um they've recently just been successful in um securing the the community-led open publication infrastructures for monographs, a slight, a slight mouthful, um, which is, you know, quite a significant and huge um, push for a very different approach to how we might see open access publishing within the, the, the kind of uh, the academic kind of arena. And I think bringing early insight to that, to, to this sort of community could be um uh, of great value we felt so yeah we're delighted to have them announced as our, our, our finals well this all sounds so exciting and it's very um very much rooted in the bleeding edge of the digital and i i i, I would just to double take when you talked to me about when you mentioned coventry having a um post digital study area <laughs> and i'm thinking we're just up the road we're pushing into digital when will we get to the posted anyway that's another matter so i've got on my list though here because there is something very undigital going on that has been going on for a little while that i've been observing and many of us have been watching it coming together uh quilt time yeah exactly francis tell us a little about the, this wonderful wonderful physical project yeah hi 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 everyone um well it is a it is it is very much a physical project and um we knew it would be a lot of work so we even had to launch it before the um the deadline for submission of the uh, abstracts and so on and um i just wanted to quote make one point first of all there are 
our quilt is called the quilt of care and justice and i think it's really important building on some of what mia said earlier to think that we can't just think about care in its you know alone we have to think of it in, in the context of justice as well and that was a very important part of our um quilt um and it's a feminist perspective as well and i've just um, found this quote from Jade Wu Henry's blog post that she did. I put a link to it in the in the chat. She says um, this feminist scholarship on care is therefore an ethico-political commitment to the marginalised, and that's one thing that I wanted to say now because one of the greatest things about the quilt will be that when it arrives at uh, OER20 it will carry with it the work of a lot of people who won't be at OER 20. And I think that's a really important point to make. Um, so, you know, it, we'll, we'll, we'll have the we website that Anne-Marie Scott has developed so beautifully that we'll have our digital quilt artifacts, but the material artifacts carry the work, as does the digital artifact of people who cannot be present and I think that's a really important thing to remember and I just had one thing to ask you um, would you like me to give you a quick preview of one of the quilts if you're able to do that that would be wonderful right. I've, I've been watching the camera really working the, it is it is right yeah. okay oh we're getting a sneaky peek here <laughs> wow can you see it? Have we have a can indeed. Oh, wow. And we, yes. And we Shall I give you a little close-up? Oh, yes, that's, a, that's a lovely, yeah. Oh, wow. And so many of the fabrics and materials that have gone into making this quilt have come from all over the world. And I know FemedTech has got the fabulous um, blog posts for many of the stories behind the making. And it's it's But also, this is... This is really important because yes, this yes. is this is a wonderful feature of open. So here's the back of the quilt, which is all fabrics that have been donated. And um, what I wanted to say about that is that the whole reuse angle, which is so important in open, has featured very heavily in this quilt. So if I was to show you this tartan, this plaid fabric here, uh, you can go and read the story of that fabric um, from somebody who won't be attending OER20, um, but who has who donated a plaid nightgown from when she worked as a post uh, postdoc in the 1980s in the university that she worked in in America. And please go and look at all the stories because they're very beautiful stories. So that's enough from me, I think. <laughs> They certainly are beautiful stories, Francis, and I know how busy you and many, many people have been producing them. And like Deb, I'm in awe, and Deb's, Deb's skills are far greater than mine, but I'm just in awe of the crafting. It's absolutely amazing, the skills that people have and that they have uh, generally, they've so generously given. Um, and good to have this feminist perspective, because I think when we think about the word care, often, again, we come back to unpaid labour and Funnily enough, it comes back very often as well to feminine unpaid labour, though that's not exclusive. I recognise that and we very much welcome all male feminists who I'm sure are here as well. So thank you for that. Well, we have we have three um, male, well, t to my knowledge, there might be more male contributors to the quilt. And uh, I think uh, we're very pleased to have them there. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, we're really looking forward to all of this. So next on my list of things going on are the opportunities for remote participation. So we've kind of got a nexus here, pulling together the physical, the digital, pulling together the distance and the presence. Um, so those of us who can't actually make it to uh, London on the 1st and 2nd of April, how can we still participate? Tell us a little bit about what is planned there. Do you want me to take this one? Oh, thank you, Martin, if you would. <laughs> um, so, yes, um, as for previous conferences, uh, I'll be getting my camera out and um, hopefully finding some help as well until we'll be uh, live streaming. So as well as the, the keynote 
slash invite slots that we have. Um, we'll be doing our usual bit to uh, live stream uh, sessions from main conference halls. So there's a really rich program of uh, sessions that um, hopefully will be available to anyone who can access uh, our, our embedded YouTube player. Um, so, uh, but it's and also contribute as well um, by the hashtag, so hash OER20. Um, but one of the lovely things about OER20 is uh, there's only so much that we can do as conference organizers, and there's a ton of other stuff that goes on simultaneously, and where we can, we, we like to facilitate this. Um, so uh, I know some of the sessions will be joining in remotely, so we've got already got, um, we know, uh, a couple of people will be doing various bits and pieces. Um, and also, uh, we're always delighted to uh, facilitate uh, um, uh, uh, collectives such as VConnecting uh, in, in terms of some of the delivery that they do, uh, not just at OER20, but around the world. So um, we'll be doing our best to facilitate that. So hopefully, even if you um, can't make it to London for various reasons, um, you can still be part of that conversation and, and contribute as well. Excellent, thank you. And uh, Autumn, I know some conversations have been going on, on in the Virtually Connecting Slack channel. Um, so would you like to turn your mic on and tell us a little bit about what's planned there? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Hi, uh, yes, we can. Great. Yeah, um, we are definitely planning on doing some virtually connecting. Um, usually the way virtually connecting works is we usually wait until it's a little bit closer to the conference because we kind of draw on the spontaneity of the moment with a little bit of planning. So um, we usually wait to see like what the schedule is going to be because we try to find those hallway moments. Um, and I'm on the committee, so I do have a little bit of an early view at that. And uh, I know that we have some good sized breaks, some like, um, you know, 15 minute breaks or so that we can uh, find some time to actually talk to each other um, and set up some virtually connecting um, sessions. So we are also going to be um, in session so virtually connecting has been accepted to present at the conference as well. And we do have a session talking about intentionally equitable hospitality. Um, we've been thinking a long time about care in virtual spaces in virtually connecting and how virtually connecting um, comes at the idea of care, especially in terms of um, in terms of uh, doing this at conferences in a bit of a different way when you're juggling all these different time zones and just thinking about um, power structures, who's in the room, who gets a voice, who gets to speak. Um, and we wrote a paper about that and we're gonna be talking about that. We're also just beginning to start to think about the planet and the environmental impacts of conference travel and how Sometimes uh, we, we need to maybe re rethink how we're approaching conferences and think about um, virtual ways of attending conferences and how that could maybe be um, helping with some care for the planet. So we're thinking about a lot of different things. Thanks for giving me a chance to talk. I'll, uh, I'll step back now. Thanks so much. Thank you, Autumn. Thanks for thanks for jumping in unexpectedly, but that's brilliant. So thanks very much. And good to hear that we're thinking about care for the planet, too. I'm just going to ignore that phone ringing because it'll stop in a minute. And let's press on to our satellite events. Jim, I know you've got something up your sleeve. I do have something up my sleeve. Sorry for the delay. Um, I just wanted to see who was on the phone. That was my essential. <laughs> Come to his mail now. It's not so I don't care. <laughs> I, I was really interested. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll be joined by Meredith Fierro and Lauren Brumfield um, from Reclaim Hosting, as well as Lauren Haywood from Coventry University, who's part of the uh, Disruptive Media uh, Learning Lab. And we'll be doing a uh, workshop 
at Coventry the day before the conference, uh, basically about getting up and running with your own um, web space. Uh, we'll be using cPanel as the example, and we'll basically try and take people through what it means uh, to manage, create, and control their own space. And I mean, I've been doing the same thing for so long now. Like, I just take whatever word someone puts in a conference and I make it work for whatever I'm doing. And I do think care works really well in terms of caring for, creating, and cultivating your own presence online. Um, it's been something we've been used, we've been very kind of uh, deliberate about since, you know, the mid 2000s at Mary Washington, and that work has gone on with uh, Reclaim. So that's uh, super fun. I also want to give a big shout out to Lauren Haywood and the care she has done for building um, Coventry's Learn, which is a really kind of deliberate, thoughtful, and intentional kind of curriculum around what it means to build, create, manage your own space. And I think there's a lot of care built in to that notion of um, what it means to empower people and to enforce people. So thank you, Mia, for that in the chat. You just gave me my <laughs> final statement. And I'll push it back. Oh, wait, one more thing. We're competing with Anne Marie's surveillance workshop, which is like you know trying to compete with ET, right? So uh, we probably won't have anyone sign up, and I blame Anne Marie. Okay, back to you. <laughs> Thank you for that. As ever, there is just so much wonderful stuff going on in in OER twenty that we're going to be torn in many many directions i know that's going to happen uh, but it's so brilliant to see how these ideas and they were really ideas when oer 14 15 um, started have come to maturity and just how rich um, the uh, the content now is when you look through the schedule for um, oer 20 it's really exciting and yes, we can. We, well, Daniel, we can have virtual lunch together. <laughs> We're getting in that in that direction. So have we covered both satellite events here? Because I can see on my list there are two satellite events. So before we move on, I just want to make sure that we haven't missed one. Or were they both? Sorry, Jim, they, they're both yours, are they? Well, I mean, they they are considered satellite events. Uh, both um, Marie's and colleagues. Uh, and also Jim's, and we also had a third satellite event that took place last week, uh, which was a Wikimedia Education uh, Summit. Um, we generated a lot of documentation, so we will be releasing that, of course, under an open license uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, we recorded the two keynotes by Lorna Campbell and um, also Alison Littlejohn, and we also recorded interviews with uh, most of the speakers. Yes, I've been I, I, very I, glad to be able to see some of that through Twitter and uh, to watch what's happening there. Thank you. Sorry, Jonathan. I, I was just going to say, and we also um, had the hugely talented Brian Mathers in kind of um, capturing the thoughts, ideas, things that resonated with him that I think some of the, which have been sort of uh, previewed through uh, Twitter uh, and the rest will also, we're, we're, we're seeking to sort of have some of the printed up um, to be on display at the conference as well as other, other spaces. So yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, these wonderful graphics that Brian produces and uh, yeah, he's, he's amazing. Where would we be without him? Excellent. We appear yeah. to be having some technical difficulties. <laughs> this might be a good um, idea. It might be a good time, Martin, to let Anne Marie try uh, and make a case while why people should go to her session <laughs> rather than Marie. I think we might have to Anne -Marie, <laughs> Yeah, Anne Marie has a slide as well. So let's let's just uh, push that out, um, Anne Marie, so that you can uh, come in and tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and thank you for putting the slide up um, because I wanted to give a shout out to the artist, Sylvia Vasconcelos. Um, and you should all go and have a look at the Counter Voices project on Instagram. She gave me permission to use this slide in our Eventbrite, um, or to use this image rather in our Eventbrite, but she's got so many beautifully drawn 
um, images. And just as you were talking about Brian Mather, so that's a perfect segue into this. Um, but she's got so many beautifully drawn images that I think really speak to a lot of the, the issues that we've been talking about today and the things we care about. She's an artist who's working on various projects exploring our relationship with technology and specifically some in the ed tech area. Um, but our, our event actually came out of Alt-C in Edinburgh last year. Um, myself, Laura Chernovitz from the University of Cape Town, Marin Deepwell from Alt and Ian Dolphin also from the Aperio Foundation. We're, we're sitting chatting and we all had the same feeling that we there are so there's so much information about um, kind of all the things that are wrong that a, a, a real paralysis sets in. Um, we know there are problems, but it's very, very difficult to get a handle on what to do about them or to imagine that things could be different or or even know how to put one step on the path towards changing things. So we conceived a, a workshop idea, um, and not kidding ourselves, 30 people in Coventry are not going to topple late stage capitalism. <laughs> what we wanted to do was um, use some speculative design methods to try and break out of this um, sense of paralysis and doom and imagine some possible futures for higher education. So the event is called Imagining Education is Public Good in the Age of Surveillance. We want to bring a, a, a real um, diverse group of people into the room um, and that's you know challenging with a self-selecting event. We, we did seed it with a few invites um, to try and see what we could do. Um, and our plan is to, to try and imagine some of these possible futures as a kind of creative exercise and then to work through um, what the concrete steps might be towards realising them. Um, so we will have some outputs to, to share at the end of the day. Um, and this really draws on a, a talk that Lola gave at OEB um, Online Educa Berlin, which Martin, you may have seen, um, where she talked really strongly about the need not just to resist a lot of what goes on in education at the moment, but to do this work of reimagining. Um, so that's what we hope to do at the workshop. But the other output that we will have out of the workshop, as well as these visions of a possible future and concrete steps you could take towards them, which we will publish online, is the methodology that we're going to use, the kind of workbook workshop material. So if other people want to run the same kind of um, event in their own context, you'll be able to pick up the material and do that. And the idea is to, to try and give people some tools some opportunity to break out of this paralysis um, and again in the spirit of inclusion and equity we're running it physically online in Coventry but a large number of the people we would have liked to be there can't um, and so we are going to try and run <laughs> a group speculative speculative design exercise online probably at some point in May um, so you can sign up for the Coventry event I think there's maybe one or two tickets left um, but you can also sign up to express interest in the online event as we've set a date. Um, we'll get back in touch with people and clearly we can take many more people for the online event than, than the face to face. Um, not entirely sure how that's going to work yet. We'll do the, the face to face one, iron out the wrinkles and then I think we'll be in a good position to do it. So that's the plan. That sounds like a great plan. I, those of you who um, uh, every now and again may come across some of my blog posts. I've, I've been blogging from a very personal perspective around care and our experience of the care system. And, you know, the more I think about this and how it ties up with what you're doing, it, I'd, I'd read something very recently about the importance of changing the narrative and the best way forward is to change the narrators. And I can't think of a better group of people to change the narrators with than those of you and those of us in the open education community. So this sounds like a great, uh, a great set of steps to push us out into that direction. Um, lovely to see empowerment at work. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions in the room? Do we have any um, I think points that anybody would like to raise, either through the chat or with your mic? Just raise a hand if you'd like a mic, if you don't have one. I think that must, must reflect just how well you've dealt with all the questions and the detail because I think this is going to be a fabulous event and yeah there's lots of 
crap out there. Sorry, didn't, I said that on the recording there. <laughs> we certainly need we certainly need a better discourse. So brilliant to uh, to have you leading the way through this event. Um, as uh, I'm going to just sort of give give you a reminder of what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jonathan, I shocked you. Um, what's going on uh, through Open Education Week? Because clearly this is Open Education Week. If you had not noticed, you must have been asleep because it's everywhere. It's great to have so many activities going on in Open Education Week. Um, but we have a parallel um, asynchronous activity going on during Open Education Week. And I'm just going to give you a, a link for that. Um, and that is around open policies and who cares and we've got some great provocations oh is leo here there we are leo is exactly the one of the people that i'm going to highlight as a star made a great entrance right on time um, when we look this is a joint asynchronous event that uh, francis and i have um pulled together and it's great to see that uh, uh we're pulling our um, resource, pooling our resources, um, because let's make no bones about this. This is a big job we're talking about. Um, and we wanted to highlight the fact that, you know, open policies, love them or hate them, they're not easy. Um, and sometimes they have unintended consequences. And we wanted to widen the discussion about the policies around open. Um, so you can see on Francis has put the FEMED tech um, link up there where we've got the possibility for people to respond um, anonymously if they prefer to because a lot of the issues we're dealing with are things to do with fairness justice um, we've got some uh, fabulous provocation that Leo has recorded on our Flipgrid as well that she, which you can access um, through the open ed sig post as well and what we're trying to do is really just pull together these discussions think think more deeply about um, what open education means to us and what it can and should mean so we're uh, we're hoping that will continue and please do feel free to uh, to add your voice to those posts and think about policy the thing about policy is they can be huge policies can be huge enablers but they can also lock out people or change the game so um, it's really important that we engage with policy and not just um, abdicate it to others um, i haven't come across any questions in the chat as such so I'm going to turn it back to Daniel and see if Daniel, there's anything else you'd like to. Um, oh, thank you, Leo. That's great. Another link. The, the links in this chat in this session have been brilliant. So uh, we're going to need to save these and make sure that uh, people can access them. Um, but please do. Yeah, Daniel, if you want to uh, add us any final sort of summary comments. Uh, no. Daniel, Jonathan. Just to say thank you to everyone and hoping that everyone can make the conference and if not that can join us uh, remotely so we can be part of the same conversation anyways um so yes that's that's, that's it and we will be also uh, actively following the hashtag over the next few weeks um, so hopefully we will be also able to uh, start some conversations that then we can um uh, have in a more focused way during the days of the conference. Excellent. Jonathan, anything you'd like to add? And yes, Lucian, we have recorded the session, so the session will be made available. Uh, Mia, perhaps if there's anything you'd like to add? Um, just that I'm excited for for convergence and community and conversations, and I am thrilled that it's a month away. <laughs> yes, it can't come quickly enough now. But you've already been so busy and so many things going on. I'm I'm just gonna. I didn't introduce myself at the beginning of the session, so I'm just gonna pop my um, Twitter handle in there because I'm very often resident in Twitter, although criticality means that that may not be the case forever so oh sorry Jonathan your Wi-Fi dropped out such is such is life <laughs> but if you do have anything feel free to grab a mic and uh, and tell us before we wind up 
this it is a really it's a really exciting event taking part in oer i can guarantee is something uh, whatever the year of oer taking part in the oer conference is something you will never forget it's such a warm and welcoming community um, and and that's the folks from alt that make that happen as well as the individual participants so i can't wait and thank you so much, all of you, for your time and for the care that you've shown in creating such a wonderful event. Haven't they been amazing, Jonathan? Absolutely. Thank you.